Hi, my name is Louise Brace. I am the storyteller for Jurgen Apello's Management 30 and Happy Melly Brands. And today I'll be introducing the first in a series of hangouts called Management 30 Case Stories. Um, and we'll be chatting to people and to teams and to businesses about their Management 30 experiences. Um, so welcome. And today um, we're actually talking across time zones. So it's 8 a.m. here in Malaga in Spain and I believe it's 6 p.m. in Melbourne, Australia uh, where I will be talking um, to Damien Fasciani from realestate.com.au. Um, so welcome Damien uh, to the first in the series of Management 30 case stories. Thank you, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, and so is it, a, is it a sunny afternoon or, or early evening in Melbourne? Well, it's 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 meant to be summertime in Melbourne now, so wow. um, it's meant to be summer up until March. But um, no, it's been fairly warm today, so we've we've this whole week we've had good weather. So it's it's sunny Melbourne. Very nice. <laughs> well, we we we're in Malaga. We're supposed to have 365 days of um, sunshine as well. Um, today is looking pretty sunny so far, but it's been a, a weird week. So, um, but here we are at the weekend. Um, thank you for taking part. Um, tell me first of all a little bit about realestate.com.au. Uh, well, I think the the name tells us what type of sector you're in. Um, but tell me a little bit about the company. Sure. So, um, real estate to started back in 1995. Um, mm -hmm. Back then, it was a relatively new concept around uh, digitizing and going online with um, our property listings. So, we are um, we are a, a digital media company uh, where we advertise both uh, residential and commercial property on our website. So, we're Australia's biggest property website. We have around mm -hmm. Uh, 44 million unique uh, views a month on our on our site. Um, people come to our site um, from all over Australia to to view and interact um, whether they're renting or buying property that's in um, our residential and commercial areas. Mm -hmm. um, we've also grown to be an international company now, so we have a property portal in Italy, uh, Casa.it. Um, we have a property portal in China called MyFun. Mm -hmm. um, and we have one in Luxembourg called At Home. So um, it's a it's an exciting time for REA. We've 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 uh, experienced really good growth over the last last seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, we're continuing to grow. So we have roughly um, 800 people uh, internationally. Um, mm -hmm. Would um, oh, it's probably bigger now. It's probably uh, almost up to 900 people internationally wow. um, with. <clears throat> Uh, head office being in Melbourne, Australia. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so really, it's a portal where um, real real estate companies are coming and they're putting their properties, um, whether it be for for rent or for for sale, onto the portal. So there's there's kind of no direct contact with with people buying or, or selling. Yeah. So uh, with the way the property market is in Australia. Um, real estate agents, uh, consumers go direct through real estate agents, and real mm -hmm. estate agents uh, then list properties on behalf of consumers on our websites. Um, so, uh, but consumers like you and me um, who like to search for property, whether they're buying or renting, um, they're the ones that give us all our traffic um, and interact with our site, uh, the majority. Um, mm -hmm. Real estate agents being our customers uh, pay for um, uh, a level of service, various products on the site. Uh, mm -hmm. In order to manage all the listings on behalf of consumers mm -hmm. out there, yeah. I, used, I used to work for a very similar company when I still lived in London. Um, where it was called Fish Four. Um, it was um, this is like back in 1999 or 2000, so it was quite a long time ago. Um, and it was a company that was um, owned by all of the 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 like the top three regional um, uh, biggest publishers, newspaper publishers in the company. So it kind of fed all of their their property classifieds and um, job classifieds and car classifieds onto the site. So um, it was a very long time ago on a much smaller scale, but <laughs> I, yeah. um, I understand the business. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's an exciting area to be in. 
Uh -huh. Tell me about your role with the company. What, what do you do for realestate.com.au? Um, so I'm the head of enterprise technology. So mm -hmm. I am responsible for um, the enterprise technology that the company uses internally. So my customers are REA staff. Uh -huh. And my team is responsible for uh, putting the best possible technology and applications into the hands of our staff so they can uh -huh. be enabled to do their role. So we look after everything from technology consulting, our cloud strategy, looking after all our uh, devices, whether it's laptops, mobile phones, all the tools that people use, um, corporate systems, our network, global network now, uh -huh. um, structure. So we kind of do the whole thing. Um, wow. into um, and I have a team of 18 people, half of them are technology consultants, uh, mm -hmm. which do more face-to-face -face consulting with staff, and the other half are engineers that mm -hmm. make the magic happen in the background. And, did, and are you having to, now you're kind of in Italy and China and, and other countries, are you going there to train staff in those countries? Are you doing it remotely? How, how, are you, how is that working? So traditionally, um, our overseas officers have got their own IT uh, areas. Sure. Um, so they have internal corporate IT people. Um, mm -hmm. What's happened is over the last three to four years, um, my team in Australia has uh, produced a, a stack of, I guess, cloud-based systems and services that we've worked really hard to offer out to Australia. And now what we're doing is... We're branching out and we're working with the other offices internationally mm -hmm. um, to offer extended services out to our Italian right. staff and our Luxembourg mm -hmm. staff just to get a level of consistency around uh, the tools and technologies that the company uses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about um, just moving um, on to Management 3.0. Tell me about your first experience um, with Management 3.0. How did you come into contact, contact um, with the concept? Um, well, we've we've known. Uh, I originally met Jurgen through um, our CIO Nigel Dalton, um, mm -hmm. who's a big agile advocate in, in internally within REA and uh, new methods of leadership and management. Um, and I met <coughs> Jurgen um, on a on a management three course back in two thousand thirteen, mm -hmm. um, and um, we've kept in contact with Jurgen since we did his original two-day course. Mm -hmm. It was the last course that Jürgen um, did uh, himself um, um, uh, globally, so we're pretty lucky to get to see yeah. him do that course. <laughs> and we kept in contact with Jürgen um, with all the initiatives that I had in my team around new style management and sentiment and so forth. And then um, last year, through contact with Jürgen, we found out that he was writing this book and he was working on it. So we were pretty excited and we were waiting for it to come out. And... Uh -huh. um, signing up to the subscription on the website, the Management 3.0 website, to get all the updates about the various chapters that were coming out and so right. forth. So it's kind of an ongoing thing from last year through to when sure. the book was released. Were you, um, when, when, once you'd done the course, did you feel that there were practices that you were definitely going to take back um, to your team and apply them? Were you, or were you already perhaps using some of them or, or using similar practices? Um, no, look, I think um, when we did the two-day course uh, with Jürgen, it really it really opened my eyes as a leader um, to different methods of collaborating and putting teams together and, mm -hmm. and just w how businesses can work in a different way. So I took a lot of initiatives out of Jürgen's two-day course and that was kind of the catalyst to us changing as a team and also the business realising or seeing a gradual change in what internal IT was going to look like. So mm -hmm. Jürgen basic, Jürgen's training and methods took us from being a traditional IT operations team to a agile, uh, open, collaborative team. Mm -hmm. um, it's very operational IT team, and normally software development teams pick up on different ways of working, but... Um, yeah we've been able to put in a whole bunch of initiatives because of that course. So that was really important in our journey. Sure. And what, I mean, what particular initiatives have worked best for your team so far? Um, one of the big ones is probably um, sentiment and um, putting methods in place to monitor sentiment on how people are feeling in the workplace, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, linking that to productivity and also having open general conversations with people about what's important to them mm -hmm. and getting to the very heart of 
um, how leaders can enable uh, people in a team mm -hmm. and also how you can drive productivity and accountability through that and also for that matter uh, the delegation model of uh -huh. seven levels of delegation and making people in a team feel empowered. Um, uh -huh. So that kind of opened up um, just different ways of collaboration within the team, having mm -hmm. open workshops, being very visual with decisions, bringing people on a journey and not just me as a leader making decisions but involving mm -hmm. people in the team mm -hmm. to be accountable and be part of, okay, if there's a problem, I'm going to help with providing a solution as well. So changing um, also attitude and ways of thinking. So um, that, that really changed the, the dynamic in the team uh, mm -hmm. quite a lot. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like that, you, that you've actually had quite a, um, a success with the, uh, the experiments, so to speak, that you put in place. Has anything failed? Uh, um, you know, not all experiments work. Is there anything that you tried to, to implant um, and, and it didn't work? Oh look, I think um, what, what, look one of the one of the concepts that Jürgen talked about that I now use as a method of thinking for me as a leader is it's okay to fail and uh -huh. iterate and, tr and try. If you're not failing, uh, you're probably not trying hard enough. Sure. And <laughs> bringing that concept into a team is very very difficult because traditionally people don't want to they're scared to fail, right? Yeah. So um, when when we kind of had those discussions and we we had that sentiment within the team, um, we then tried different ways of having having workshops or you know pairing an engineer with a technology consultant and trying different ways of executing certain pieces of work. So it became acceptable to. Uh, Say we're flexible enough to fail at some, to try something new, fail, and then iterate, and then have an open discussion about how we can do things better. So mm -hmm. um, we went from monitoring individuals to monitoring the system of work and mm -hmm. how people are collaborating and getting work done. Um, so that has been a big positive for the team. Uh -huh. And and th these transitions and changes, what ha what's the kind of period of time that you've been introducing them over? So I guess the whole timeline has been pretty much from around September 2013 through mm -hmm. to now. Um, we really don't have, we went from having an end goal to um, to now the attitude is continual improvement across all facets of our team. Mm -hmm. So whether it's engineering, data center best practices, rolling out cool cloud technology, um, trying to now we have the culture within the team of continual improvement across all areas. So it feels pretty. Um, it feels pretty natural now. Yeah, it is. It's it's very it's very natural. And mm -hmm. I guess the, the one I guess the one constant challenge we have is if we do hire new people and they've come from traditional corporate companies, you have to introduce them to this new concept and new way of thinking. Yeah. So for them. You, you need to give them a grace period to get used to a new way of working, uh -huh. uh, particularly if they've come from an environment where they've been micromanaged or top-down management. Mm -hmm. You need to give them a good three, four months to really get into the into the mould of things. So mm -hmm. that's a challenge that we have, but that's, I think, part of the overall journey. Yeah. And I think that perhaps that once they see um, how much healthier um, a team is working um, with... Um, you know, a management 3.0 practice, then it kind of, you know, becomes, um, you know, a, a challenge for them to to become part of that. And I, I you know, I really believe that it, it, you know, it gives the teams and the people more identity. Um, do you have any metrics or, or uh, kind of statistics that show that the practice has, um, you know, kind of engaged staff or teams better, or you know, the work the work productivity is better? I guess when we were kind of so, so the quick answer to that is no. We, we don't have specific numbers. I guess that, well, I'll correct myself. The biggest number we have is really our, our net promoter score. So mm -hmm. internally, we push out um, through our support services area. We push out an NPS survey, which is three questions. Um, and since we kind of went on this journey and we changed the way we our, our team was structured and changed our attitude and the way we work. Um, our NPS, our Net Promoter Score, um, has gradually gone up 
time. Mm -hmm. So we set a diagnostic to say we didn't want our NPS score to drop below 72 mm -hmm. from the end of, well, about October 2013. Um, our, our NPS score was floating around the 80 mark, plus mm -hmm. 80. Um, and that was throughout 2014. Um, towards the end of 2014, it jumped to plus 91. And at wow. the moment, we're sitting on plus 93 wow. within the organisation. Now, you can't keep everybody happy, um, mm -hmm. but they are, they're transactional-based NPS uh, surveys that go out out of um, uh, Zendesk.com, which is our customer support platform. So um, Net Promoter Score is the one tangible metric that we have. Mm -hmm. So rather than worrying about SLAs on support um, or SLAs on an engineering uh, platform, the NPS is really true to our heart mm -hmm. and it's part of the one-on-one -on -one conversations I have with my staff or my team leaders have with their staff month by month. So. Um, that seems to be gradually going up, and I guess now we we uh, yeah I guess we're, we're quite proud of that, and um, yeah we'll keep trying to evolve and get better. Okay. Excellent. And will you keep us posted about the, how you keep evolving? Oh, how you, definitely. How your experiences or your adventures are working with Management Three Zero. Oh, definitely. Our, yeah. our attitude is we're always happy to share um, what works and what doesn't work, and mm -hmm. and. Over here in Australia, we are big advocates for inviting other companies in to do tours of our new building and share what we can share around how we work. And mm -hmm. if it's going to help make other organisations better or have them try other things, it's not that what we're doing is the best way. It's just we're uh -huh. happy to talk about it. <laughs> so uh, we're definitely happy to share. Excellent. Thank you. Well, Damien, thank you so much for chatting to me today. Before you go, um, actually when we were first doing this interview, I think it was going to be like 8 o'clock in the morning for you and, and 10 o'clock at night for me, so it was a slight switch, but I'm still going to ask you the question. Because we are um, we're on a virtual book tour at the moment for um, Jürgen Apello's Workout book, um, as you can see here, the book that we talked about in the first place. It's called Workout. Um, just a quick question for you personally. So what do you do, it doesn't have to be an exercise, but what do you do to work out um, and to get you motivated, whether it be in the morning or the evening, um, to get you ready to kind of, um, you know, go into work and challenge productivity and teams? Um, so fitness is a big part of my life, actually, so it's funny you uh -huh. ask this question. So um, I get to work every morning at 7 a.m. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a gym right across the road. So okay, that's I handy. Days a week and I uh -huh. go to the gym five days a week. So if I can exercise in the morning and now there are people um, uh, that come with me to the gym from the team, it's a good mm -hmm. way to, to to get the body and the mind um, ready and mm -hmm. we do that Monday to Friday. Excellent. Thank you so much and uh, we'll look forward to hearing updates of your experience. Thanks very much Damien. Take care. Have a great weekend. No worries. Thanks for having me. Bye.